Well, uh, um, hello everybody. I'm uh, Vladimir Kulyukin. I'm with you the state, the research professor over there. So um, it's good to be back uh, at the institution where I spent a good chunk of my sabbatical in 2010. Just want to uh, say hi to the people uh, that know me and whom I know. I also want to say hi for Bill Crandall, uh, one of my uh, mentors. Uh, Bill has uh, Parkinson's. He couldn't be here, unfortunately, but I had a Skype conversation with him. Um, he's in Georgia, so he says hello uh, uh, as well. Okay, so um, uh, the title of my talk, uh, well, I guess it's in line uh, with, um, uh, I definitely want to know about secret sauce. So that uh, <laughs> I just want to, um, so it's vision-based nutrition information extraction from product packages on smartphones. And um, I just want to qualify this by saying that um, this is one of the projects uh, that I started working on about a year ago. Um, and the low vision and visually impaired individuals were not the focus of, of that project. Uh, so it's, uh, I got some uh, private funding from industry uh, and there's a company, a Utah-based company, MDSC. Uh, it does a lot of work for uh, the Utah Department of Health. And uh, uh, about 11 months ago, I got a phone call from them and they said, Vladimir, we understand that you've been doing some uh, grocery uh, shopping apps. Uh, and I said, well, yes, primarily barcode based though. And I said, well, that's okay. We need uh, um, uh, a vision front end uh, for our nutrition management system. And uh, it turns out that um, they are developing a system for the program called BeWise, uh, and this is a program for women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. There's about um, uh, a thousand, well, not a hundred uh, active out, uh, outdoor patients, and uh, uh, they want to manage, uh, help them manage their nutrition uh, for them. And so, what a good chunk of uh, what I will be talking about has low vision and blindness as an added value. So Mike May, I don't know where Mike is, but oh, well, what he said uh, um, uh, reminded me of his talk in, uh, at the World Blight Congress in 2004. <laughs> he said that, well, uh, um, uh, low vision accessibility uh, can only be an added value in a commercial <laughs> software development, which is, which is very true. Okay, so, um, uh, so I, I, I will motivate uh, my talk, Critical Barriers, uh, then I will uh, tell you how I got from robotic shopping carts to PEANUTS. Uh, PEANUTS is an abbreviation of the system. It stands for Persuasive Nutrition Management, uh, uh, Nutrition System. And then, oh, the gist of my talk is what information can be reliably extracted from product packages and how. I will tell you how dogs can eat skewed barcodes, uh, and uh, uh, how lines and corners can text chunk nutrition labels. And I'll, I'll, I'll spend a minute on preliminary results and conclusions. So the motivation is uh, this, that uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates uh, that the U.S. residents have increased their caloric intake by 523 calories per day since uh, 1970. Uh, mismanaged diets are estimated to account for 30 to 35 percent of cancer and diabetes cases. Uh, while I'm not sure about cancer, but I have a very close familiarity with diabetes. My father died of diabetes. My younger brother was just diagnosed with diabetes. So it's a, it's a killer disease. Uh, so many nutritionists consider proactive uh, nutrition management to be a key factor in uh, controlling cancer and diabetes. And obviously, this is the added value. Nutrition information needs to be available to low vision and blind uh, uh, blind individuals. Um, so now, uh, what are some critical barriers? Um, and um, uh, so see, there are primarily three, and that is a lack of automated real-time nutrition information analysis, um, barcodes, especially skewed ones, and nutrition labels have a lot of characteristics that impede timely detection and or adequate comprehension. Well, especially nutrition labels. Then a uh, lack of automated real-time context-sensitive nutrition decision support. Uh, right now, we have very weak coupling of purchasing decisions to patients' current locations, ODLs. ODLs stand for observation of daily livings and public health records. And then uh, lack of automated real-time nutrition intake recording. So manual nutrition intake, that is sort of the sta state of the art in nutrition management systems is very time consuming and error prone, especially on s smartphones, as you, most of you know. So, um, so this is my um, road to, uh, uh, from robotic shopping carts to peanuts. Uh, so 
that's a big robot uh, used to cost uh, cost us fifteen thousand dollars that I uh, started thinking about in 2000 uh, year 2000 and you know implement my graduate students and I implemented it and then it sort of was getting smaller and smaller ever since and now it's all uh, just one Android phone right and that Android phone has more processing power than that robot uh, so uh, that's just uh, how come we have uh, how far we have uh, we have come um, so, and by the way, persuasive, uh, I borrowed that term from Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Fogg, uh, he's a, um, uh, a nutrition, uh, he's a cognitive psychologist from uh, Stanford, I believe, uh, so, and he uh, has this uh, nice uh, uh, framework called persuasive technology, so, uh, anyway, uh, what information can be reliably extracted from product packages and, uh, and how? Well, uh, on product packages, there are two types of information. There's skewed, uh, well, bar barcodes. Well, skewed, I would imagine. Uh, I would add. And then uh, nutrition, uh, nutrition fact uh, tables. So um, there's a lot of work uh, that has been uh, done on um, barcode scanning, uh, assuming that uh, you can align the camera. But uh, for low vision individuals and people, uh, elderly individuals uh, who have, let's say, Parkinson's, right, sh hands shaking, so um, it, it's nice to just take a picture of the surface where barcode is positioned somewhere and being able to, uh, to scan it. And then uh, the same thing with nutrition facts. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we can uh, do barcode scanning, barcode localization and scanning and nutrition uh, fact, uh, nutrition label reading, then we can essentially construct our own databases, uh, automate the construction of our own databases. So. Um, uh, so this is the, the current state of the system, uh, and that is you can take a frame of a, a skewed barcode, and if there, it, it's anywhere in the picture, it will be localized. And then uh, nutrition, uh, also nutrition label, it will be localized and chunked. Now I, I, I want to say right now that I did not want to uh, work on OCR, so for OCR uh, uh, I have been using Tesseract. Okay, so, uh, so once the text has been chunked, then it is fed uh, to the Tesseract, uh, runs in the cloud, and then it's as good as, uh, as Tesseract. Okay, so um, uh, now, uh, what's, uh, how, how do we detect skewed barcodes? I mean, it's, it's one of the technical, f for those of you who have been working on barcode uh, localization and scanning, localization is a much harder problem, right, than, than scanning the barcode, right, it's especially if you cannot assume aligning. So, uh, and uh, what, what I do in this system is uh, develop this uh, dominant orientation of gradient uh, that you can uh, push a mask of a specific size, like 20 by 20, is what, is what I do. And then you can compute the average gradient orientation in that mask, right? And then uh, it turns out uh, that the uh, parts of the image that have similar gradients uh, can be combined into bigger clusters, uh, also using some geometric constraints. And then you can have a nice, uh, nice barcode uh, uh, localization area. And then you, since you know the uh, um, uh, the gradient orientation, you can take a line and just send it to some uh, barcode scanning algorithm, such as uh, such as zebra crossing or uh, something that Ender Tekken <laughs> has developed here. So, but that's a, it's generally considered in the community to be a solved problem. Once you have a pixel wide line that covers the entire barcode, then uh, it, it can be reasonably said. Localizing it is, is, is what the problem is. And uh, for, the, uh, for the text spotting, um, well, you can, uh, if you take a look at the nutrition label, uh, you can uh, detect a lot of nice lines. And then also, uh, you can uh, use the dilate uh, and the road corner detection. And the hypothesis here is that uh, chunks of text will um, uh, exhibit uh, a larger than normal uh, concentration of corners, and then you can use both of those uh, both of those uh, things to um, uh, extract text, and then uh, feed it into uh, nutrition uh, into an OCR engine. So, um, okay, and that's uh, that's essentially how the system works right now. Uh, again, I uh, have not uh, uh, have not implemented OCR, so I want to uh, make sure that you know I'm not solving uh, I'm not solving the OCR. Uh, problem. So, um, um, as far as as far as the barcode, the skewed barcode localization, uh, I, I believe that uh, we have. Uh, I mean, we, we have a good solution: skewed barcode localization. So, 
uh, tested it on uh, uh, a thousand, like over a thousand images, well, frames actually extracted from real videos, uh, UPC barcodes, and uh, it, it, it localizes, uh, localizes the, the barcode pr pretty well. I'm surprised that the zebra crossing did not perform uh, as well as I expected it to perform on scanned barcode lights, because the, the idea is that you should avoid uh, rotating the image. You know, you can just take a scan line and then feed it into the, into the scanner. And then for the nutrition uh, uh, localization, I have so far been able to, um, well, for this talk anyway, the experiments are ongoing uh, to test it on 45 images. And the, the problem was that I, I needed to manually uh, uh, identify the frame in each, uh, the, the, the nutrition table in each, uh, in each frame so that to, to get some ground truth, uh, right, of how, how well I, 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 can, uh, I can localize and, uh, and text chunk. And then this is all done on Android 2.3.6 and 4.2. I'm not going to get into the discussion as David Ross, right, uh, want, wants me to engage what's the relative advantages and disadvantages of iPhone and Android. I actually believe that, I mean, it depends on your perspective. So if you're open source, Android. If not, if you want to make money, then <laughs> obviously, obviously iPhone. But it's all going to get irrelevant anyway with cloud computing. That I, I believe that HTML5, right, and similar developments will essentially turn the cell phones into just gateways into cloud computing services. So he who, he who controls the cloud controls the world, right? Uh, so, I mean, and it's either you either eat into your data plan or into your battery life. I mean, that's life. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, uh, James. So anyway, so dog, uh, the dog performance on the sample of, of those images, precision was 90%, uh, true negatives, 97. It's a very conservative algorithm. But the, the, the good thing is that it doesn't hallucinate. False positive is only 2.5%. And then the uh, nutrition label localization performance was a mean error, uh, was, was about uh, 1%. And then... We also estimated check text chunking, uh, but uh, that that's the work in pro uh, that's a, uh, that's work in progress. So we hope to improve it. And then you know, uh, we uh, um, uh, well, I I I, I estimated uh, the relative advantages and evaluated the relative advantages and disadvantages of GOCR and uh, um, Tesseract. Tesseract appears to be uh, better than uh, than GOCR, uh, although GOCR appears to be a little bit faster. But what I like about them is that they both open source, and I can tinker with the C code. So, uh, and that's always and that's always good. Um, anyway, uh, so these are some references that are documenting the, um, uh, uh, the the details, technical details. I would, you know, it's not it's not a pitch. It's like a, basically, uh, uh, I don't want to pitch my blog, but the most useful uh, if you are a techie is the last one, because I run a very active technical blog. Uh, and um, uh, most of the low-level C, uh, like programmatic issues, are addressed at that uh, at that blog. I mean, the papers are. I mean, I guess they read. Uh, they're read by ten people, three reviewers included, and they're so <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 what you do to maintain your current salary and get salary raises at your research university. So, but that's the. <laughs> <laughs> any, anyway, okay, well, thank you, and um, I'd be happy to take questions if, if there are any. Thank you. Questions? <coughs> no questions from the audience? Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask I know you've done a lot of work testing some of your barcode apps with blind users. Can you just say a few words about that? That was not the emphasis of this talk. Right, right. Um, uh, well, I mean, we, we have... Um, 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 yeah, I'm not going to... Uh, well, I don't want to uh, pitch it too much, James, but, but I think that as far as barcode localization, like real-time uh, real barcode localization is concerned, that that problem, uh, for all practical purposes, uh, well, can be considered closed. Okay, so because like there's a good understanding of how how that is done. Scanning skewed barcodes. I mean, I well, t uh, zebra crossing is supposed to be a uh, uh, state of the art, right? And uh, it turns out that you know, it has a lot of problems reading the uh, skewed barcode lines. I mean, a line, if you align, then it works really well. But skewed, so. If uh, like there is a there is an intern somewhere, right, and, or an undergraduate who wants to address that problem of skewed barcode scanning, that that would be a good 
uh, scanning, not not localization, right? So yeah, I mean, and yeah, the work it works. So yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Gordon. Yeah. <coughs> so just to clarify, um, if you identify the barcode. Um, is it plausible simply to capture the nutrition or medical information online and skip the OCR part of the uh, analysis? It, it depends, right, Gordon. It, it, it's as good as your uh, uh, nutrition databases. So that's, uh, if you have access to, let's say, the inventory control system of Walmart, then yes, so long as you can capture a barcode, then the nutrition information uh, theoretically is available. Uh, the problem is that I have been trying uh, to work with Walmart for three years. They turned me down. So they, uh, and then I, even, even the local supermarket, you know, they, they, they do not want to uh, give you access to their inventory control system. So. One more? But yes, the answer to your question is yes. I mean, theoretically, if you can spot that. Another question? Oh, Christopher. <laughs> Getting my exercise. Yeah. So um, you keep saying skewed barcodes. You actually showed an orient, orient, uh, misoriented barcode. Well, that's what I mean by, uh, skew, by, by skewed. And yes. So skew is, is a more extreme that's right. distortion, and that, that's perspective right. is even more extreme. Yes. So uh, can you handle perspective? You mean like warping, right? Uh, is that or, or like like okay the, so, the, so the so the no the lines are no the, the, longer the, parallel. The, the answer is no, no. So it's just rotated. No, I was just giving him a hand signal. Right. What we well that's what I guess James was gracious enough to uh, uh, allow me to talk about that, but I I forgot to mention um, in the grocery store experiments uh, with low vision individuals. Um, uh, we're actually trying to use the um, uh, I I internal sensors uh, of the Android phone to help keep the camera aligned with, with the surface. And, and that's what, so the barcode can be skewed, but the camera will be aligned and the pitch and yaw play uh, with, with the barcode surface. So, yeah, I didn't mention that. Okay. There are no other questions. Let's, thanks. Thank Vladimir again.